From today's TMJ4, this is Live at 3. Today on Live at 3, police are investigating threats of violence at a high school in Union Grove. But we begin with breaking news. We are getting reports that a child has been struck by a bus at 32nd and Brown. Flight for Life has been called into the scene. Uh, one of our crews already on the way, Heather Shannon, is heading to that location. We don't know the extent right now of the child's injuries, but stay tuned for updates throughout this newscast. Now back to our other top story. At three, handwritten messages were found. One even mentioned a gun. Diane Pathew has more from Union Grove in Racine County. Right now, it doesn't appear that any of these threats are credible, but school officials say they're taking all the necessary precautions. We found six Racine County deputies patrolling the school looking for any indication as to who could be behind this. There were no names. There was no specific date. There was uh, nobody referenced in the note. Superintendent David Mager says three messages were found, one on March 27th and two yesterday. The first two referred to someone having a gun and using it in school. The third message said this week and was found in a different girl's bathroom. Investigators are now analyzing the handwriting and showing it to the teachers. They're even reaching out to the students. We asked that they would, uh, you know, listen. Uh, around the school, listen to conversations, notify school administration or their parents or the sheriff's department if they had any creditable uh, uh, information. The school did offer students an excused absence. Mom Debbie Schultz took advantage of that and decided to keep son Cody at home. I'm sure or I hope that it'll turn out to be nothing, you know, but I don't want to be one of those parents that thinks that and sends my kid to school and then it's not nothing. Debbie's not the only parent worried. 250 kids didn't show up to school today. And in this very safe community and tight-knit school, that's a big deal. To have something like this disrupt that normal flow and to uh, compromise the, uh, the safety that parents believe uh, exists at the school is disheartening. So they're trying to ease the minds of parents, students, and staff as best they can. At least one Racine County Sheriff's deputy will be at the school every day this week. In Union Grove, Diane Pathew, today's TMJ4 HD. Union High School Superintendent also says a monetary reward will be offered to anyone who has information about who may have written the threats. A breaking news update now on Live at 3. The smell of natural gas led to evacuations on the MSOE campus in Milwaukee this morning. We Energies checked it out but could not find any gas leaks. Big clouds of smoke could be seen this morning by Mitchell International Airport. MATC in Oak Creek tells us they were doing a fire training exercise. The man accused of stealing a plane in Canada and flying across four states told authorities he wanted to be shot down. Police have named this man a suspect. Adam Dylan Leon is a native of Turkey who changed his name and became a Canadian citizen last year. Authorities say Leon stole a single engine four seat Cessna from a flight school in Thunder Bay, Ontario. It was intercepted by F-16 fighters from the Wisconsin National Guard after crossing into the state near the Michigan state line. As Vince Petrano tells us, the six hour ordeal ended when Leon landed on a rural road in southeastern Missouri. An incident that caused so much commotion ended on this road in Elsinore, Missouri, a small town population 360. The pilot hitched a ride to a convenience store where he was arrested a short time later. We kind of got suspicious of the guy, you know, and probably 10, 15 minutes later, cops come in and, you know, kind of surrounded him at the table and he was just sitting there calm, you know, and talked to him and um, ended up arresting him and took him out of here. It brought to an end a bizarre series of events that included the evacuation of the Wisconsin state capitol. Evacuate the area. Evacuate the area. If you can hear me, you are not safe. As two F-16 fighters from the Wisconsin National Guard trailed the plane, Madison police scrambled to secure the perimeter of the building and shut down streets. Most workers were already out of the building when it was evacuated. Vince Vitrano, today's TMJ4. Leon told the state trooper that arrested him that he was having personal problems and wanted to be shot down. Authorities maintain there was never a concern of a terrorist threat. Leon is now in federal custody. Police have found a Milwaukee mother who abandoned her baby girl on the north side. The infant was found inside a diaper bag in an alley near 60th and Hope early Monday morning. Police believe the baby girl is between two and five days old. No word yet if charges will be filed against the mother. We sound off on this issue just ahead. Parents can give up their children under Wisconsin's safe haven law. That law means a parent can leave a child less than 72 hours old at a police or fire station or a hospital 
with no repercussions and no questions asked. Whitefish Bay Police will try to calm the community tonight after the death of Madison Kiefer. The teen died after buying some drugs. Police believe she got them from a man who lives in Whitefish Bay. The Whitefish Bay Police Chief will talk to parents tonight at Dominican High School. We'll have much more on this story on Live at 6. You may not realize, but it's election day today, and the polls are open until 8 o'clock tonight. Two statewide contests are on the ballot, including the Supreme Court race between three-term incumbent Shirley Abrahamson and challenger Randy Koshnick. He's a circuit court judge from Jefferson County. And in the race for state superintendent of education, Tony Evers is facing Rose Fernandez. Watch live at 10 for race results. Racine also has a mayoral race today, but it's just a primary. Eleven candidates are running to replace Gary Becker, who resigned earlier this year. The top two finishers today will square off in another election on May 5th. And former Racine Mayor Gary Becker is asking for more treatment for a sex addi addiction. Police busted Becker earlier this year. They claim he wanted to have sex with a teen he met online. The teen was actually an undercover officer. Becker is currently undergoing treatment in Pennsylvania. Well, we saw a little bit of a weather warm up today, not as much as we might like, no, it but it <laughs> feels a little cool out there outside, especially with the wind. This is a live look at our tower cam in Milwaukee right now. We're going to send it over to Brian Goddard with the first look at three here on uh, the weather. What's happening out there? You know, it is gorgeous with the sunshine, but that wind you were talking about just won't let up three days now. Very strong, gusty winds as that storm system that affected us on Sunday that we missed the snow has continued to bring the chill and those strong winds. First of all, take a look at our live advanced Doppler 4 radar. You can see that we are fine. We are dry across Wisconsin, but snow showers, lake effect snow showers back into lower Michigan, even the UP. And as we pan out, you'll see that we even have lake effect snows from Buffalo to Syracuse, Cleveland, all the way down into Cincinnati and Lexington, Kentucky. They are seeing snow in the Appalachian Mountains. Better them than us, I guess you want to say. Taking a look at outside, Waukesha, sunny skies, 46 degrees, still very windy. West to northwest winds at 23. That's putting wind chills in the upper 30s. And temperatures not getting close to 50. In fact, it is 50 in Burlington, 48 in Milwaukee, 46 in Beaver Dam. But those winds continue to be out of the west, anywhere from 20 to 35 miles per hour. The peak gust right now is Waukesha at 35 miles per hour. So for this evening, winds will slowly diminish. 45 degrees by 6 o'clock and by 10 o'clock, 38 and winds become light overnight tonight, which will be very nice. No wind chills in the teens like we've had the past couple of mornings. Hopefully the Brewers will play their game this afternoon. It has been raining all day in San Francisco. We'll show you their radar and, of course, our seven-day planner in just a few minutes. If not, they'll play too tomorrow. All right, thanks. A preliminary hearing was held this afternoon for the alleged predator at the pool. West Allis is now working toward the firing of swimming instructor Daniel Acker. I will be consulting with our school district legal counsel with regards to the procedure for moving forward uh, Dan Acker's status from unpaid administrative leave to termination. Last night, the West Dallas West Milwaukee School Board went into closed session to talk about firing Acker. Members will try to get more information from Greenfield Police about the sexual assault allegations against Acker before officially terminating him. Acker has been on unpaid leave since those allegations surfaced. Today's TMJ4 found records showing police had plenty of contact with Daniel Acker over the years. In April and May of 1993, West Dallas police visited Acker's home four times. The calls were for break-ins and so-called house checks. Throughout the 90s, there were frequent calls for accidental burglary alarms. In later years, many of the calls involved suspected drug and alcohol abuse by juveniles. Coming up new on Live at 4, the stars and celebrities converge to convince the Olympic Committee that the 2016 Games should be held in the Windy City. And just ahead on Live at 3, we continue to follow breaking news from Milwaukee where a child has been hit by a bus. Plus, viewers sound off about an abandoned baby should the mom be charged with a crime. And coming up, Milwaukee's iconic motorcycle manufacturer gets a new leader, but one that doesn't even own a hog.